Good morning, Will of Life. It's wonderful to be able to share with you the daily devotion. I just want to share with you a little bit of scripture that I was reading the other day that just really jumped out to me. In John chapter 16, verse 33, we have this really uh, simple two-part promise that Jesus makes the disciples. The context is that the disciples have just sat with Jesus at the Last Supper. Again, he's talked about um, his upcoming death. He spent time praying together. He spent time teaching them. And now they're heading towards the Garden of Gethsemane where he will eventually be arrested. Jesus is fully aware of what is going to happen to him. He's fully aware of the journey that the disciples will go on up to the cross on Resurre Resurrection Sunday. And from that point onwards, as, as they experience the filling of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the early church, the scattering of the church, persecution, and the spreading of the gospel into the nations. And he makes this beautiful promise. He says, I have told you these things. He's been talking about how grief will turn to joy and there will be troubles coming. So that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And there's just a couple of things that really stood out to me, particularly as we um, carry on in this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus season that we're in. We're in um, week two, or actually going into week three or four lockdown. People are losing their jobs. People, um, have, people's loved ones are passing away. People's health is deteriorating. The world is troubled. The world is difficult. We cannot gather together as a faith community at this moment. We cannot be with friends. We cannot be with loved ones. There is a difficulty in this season. And yet Jesus promises that you will have peace. The Hebrew word for peace is the word shalom. And it doesn't just simply mean a kind of an absence of trouble and absence of difficulties. The word shalom actually means um, wholeness or completeness. And so the idea of having peace is this idea that you have been made complete, that you are whole, that there is nothing lacking to you. And so the reason that as Christians we talk about that God brings us peace, that God gives us peace, is not that trouble will never, um, will never face us, not that we won't go through difficult seasons, because Jesus actually promises that. He says that in this world you will have trouble, there will be difficult times, but that God gives us wholeness, God gives us completeness. God gives us the ability to ride out the situation, to carry on, to know that actually in ourselves there is nothing lacking because all is made whole and complete in him. I love that not only does Jesus make this promise to the disciples that if they abide in him, if they are in him, if they seek him out in his presence, they will have this peace. But then on the other hand, he also says, for you will have trouble in this world. Life will be difficult. I think there are some parts of Christianity that kind of preaches this gospel that you turn to Jesus and everything will be great, nothing will ever go wrong. And we know from our own experience as reality that's simply not true. We know from the words of Jesus, he is saying that it's not true. But then he makes this final promise. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. You see, it's the world around us, it's this fallen, broken system that we find ourselves in that is the cause of our troubles. But Jesus is declaring that he has actually overcome the world. And that's how we know, that's how we can be sure of his promise that we will have peace, that we will have shalom, that we will be complete, and we will be made whole. In uh, in the letters of 1 John, 
The author of 1 John actually makes this promise. He, he actually extends what Jesus says. And he says that not only will Jesus overcome the world, but in chapter 5, verse 4, he says this. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And so actually that promise that Jesus makes that, that, we, that he has overcome, overcome the world is now actually passed on to us. That we will overcome the world. That we no longer have to have our lives dictated by the broken, fallen, sinful systems of this world. But in fact we are found in Jesus and therefore we are overcomers. Therefore we can be people of shalom, people of peace, people of wholeness of completedness and so today I want you to think about where is the area in your life that is lacking peace what is the area in your life that you're feeling a lack of wholeness of completeness and when we think about those things and we all have them we all have those places where anxiety and fear and worry can creep into then the command that Jesus makes is to trust that he has overcome them the command that Jesus gives us today is to know that we are overcomers and that he has made his peace accessible to all of us. So today what I want you to do is to think about that area and to almost imagine that you are handing that area, that, that area where, where shalom does not reign and handing it back to Jesus and allowing Jesus to hand to you his wholeness, his completeness, his shalom.